and welcome to the episode 171 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Early gigs, the start of the 1965 European tour, and the creation of Revolution 9 are some of the items on our menu today. Let's start with the usual 1961 gig at the Top 10 Club in Hamburg, West Germany. It was the 20th of June, and there were only a handful more dates to honor before the second residency of the Beatles, with Pete Bass and Drums, was completed. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best, performed a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. The evening bill also included King Size Taylor and the Dominoes, and the Sorrels. Moving on to 1963, we get two items worth our attention. The first is a key moment in the history of the Beatles, the formation of the Beatles Limited. The company, another brainchild of their manager Brian Epstein, was meant to be a way to allow each Beatle to participate in the successes of the band, getting more money and paying less taxes. In other news, on the 20th of June 1963, John Lennon sent a telegram to Bob Wooler to apologize for his behavior at Paul McCartney's 21st birthday party. See episode 169 of What a Fab Day to learn more. The telegram read, Really sorry, Bob. Stop. Terribly worried to realize what I had done. Stop. What more can I say, John Lennon? There's some debate on whether the gesture was instigated by Brian Epstein, but it seems Lennon was clearly distressed and deeply ashamed by his behavior. 1964, while in Australia, the Beatles gave a telephone interview to Colin Hamilton for the BBC radio program Roundabout. The five-minute interview, split into three segments, was aired during the 27th of June show, between 5 and 6.30 pm. In the evening, the band performed another two gigs at the Sydney Stadium, ending the Australian leg of their tour. Both houses were again sold out, with 12,000 people seated for each concert. Again, the public threw jelly babies and other objects onto the stage. John Lennon was hit on the foot by an egg, which prompted him to shout, What do you think I am? A salad? in the general direction where the egg came from. And with much less than the cost of a salad, you can finance my adventures in music-related content creation and show me how fab you are. How? Head to www.simonmas.com support to find that out, along with many other ways in which you can make me feel that you care and give a hand to the dissemination of all kinds of music history content on the internet. Thank you! Let's now move to the 20th of June 1965 and to the last live performance featured in this show. It was on this date that the Beatles arrived in Paris for what turned out to be their last European tour. Backed by the Yardbirds, the band performed twice at the Palais des Esports in Paris, once at 3 pm and again at 9 pm, in front of 6,000 people for the two combined shows. The 3 pm performance was recorded by the French Europe on radio station and broadcast on the 27th of June between 1 and 2 pm. The 9 pm performance, instead, was broadcast live, also by Europe on, between 9 and 11 pm. The evening show was also filmed and broadcast by the second channel of French TV's national broadcaster on the 31st of October between 7.30 and 8 pm. The Beatles' repertoire for the 14-date tour included Twist and Shout, a shortened version, She's a Woman, I'm a Loser, Can't Buy Me Love, Babies in Black, I Wanna Be Your Man, A Hard Day's Night, Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby, Rock and Roll Music, I Feel Fine, Ticket to Ride, and Long Tall Sally. After the concerts, the Fab received the visit of pop singer Françoise Hardy, and then went to the Castel nightclub to celebrate the start of the tour. 
In 1966, working at the EMI studios in Abbey Road between 6 and 8.30 p.m., George Martin and his team prepared another mono mix of Got To Get You Into My Life. The reason for wanting a new mix was to bring out more the brass and the woodwind sections, a matter resolved by doubling the existing taped material and putting it out of sync, creating a thicker sound. Let's close the episode with two 1968 stories. On the 20th of June, Paul McCartney flew to Los Angeles, California, on a business trip for Apple. The purpose was to show a promotional film about the new company to the big hats at Capitol during a convention. Stopping in New York for the first leg of the trip, Paul met with Ivan Vaughan, his childhood friend who had introduced him to John Lennon in 1957. Check episode 187 of What A Fab Day for that. Paul also rushed to call Linda Eastman on the phone, leaving her a message on her answering service. Meanwhile, in London, John Lennon and George Harrison continued the work on the new album, and specifically on Revolution 9. During a 7 pm to 3.30 am session in Abbey Road, John Lennon was in command of all the three studios, directing George, Yoko Ono, and the engineers to create a final mix of the song. Using many loop tapes fed into one recording machine, the session ran a bit like the final work for Tomorrow Never Knows, with the only significant difference that it was John himself behind the mixing desk instead of Jeff Hemerick. This concludes today's episode. If you fancy hearing about three exciting studio sessions, you better tune in tomorrow for more. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.